Hello, Professor Hildebrandt with another video, another example um, of an ex uh, exercise from Chapter 10 on hypothesis testing. Um, this time we're going to look at a problem where we have a two-tailed test, and once again, our standard deviation will be known. So if you're following along with me in the textbook, this is exercise number 5 from Chapter 10 on page 334. Um, traditionally, I try to work out examples where you guys were not given the answers, which are the even numbers, but there was not a two-tailed example in this chapter that was an even number, so I just picked this one. Um, but let me read you the question. So we've got a manufacturer of some truck tires, and they claim that the mean mileage that the tire can be driven before your tread is going to run out is found to be 60,000. So this is the population parameter that we're going to test. They're saying that the mean um, for the population should be 60,000. Um, we're also told that the mileage wear follows a normal distribution and that the standard deviation for our population is 5,000. So I've written that out here. Um, so we have a company that buys 48 tires. So that's going to be our sample. So our N is 48. And they found that for their sample, the mean mileage was only 59,500 miles. So that will be the mean for our sample. And so then we're asked to find out if this company's experience is different from that that was claimed by the tire manufacturer at a significance level of 0 0.05. So, okay, here we go, guys. So the first part of the question, part A, um, asks us to state the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. Um, and so, again, I kind of already told you guys that this was going to be a two-tell because we're trying to see... So the null hypothesis is that the population mean will be equal to 60,000 miles. And then that makes our alternate hypothesis that the population mean does not equal 60,000 miles. The second part of our question says state the decision rule. Okay, so we have to find our decision rule. And remember to do this, we're going to use that level of significance. Okay, significance. And we're going to go once again to table B5. So we're going to go to table B5. We're going to go to the column that says two tail test and significance level of 0 0.05. So that's going to be your column. For on the row, remember when we're finding our decision rule, we always go down to the infinity row, the very last one. And so we would get an 1.96. So our decision rule is that we're going to reject the null hypothesis if our Z is either less than negative 1.96 or if our Z is greater than. 1.96 okay um, and so let me draw this out for you guys so you can see our normal distribution here so again this is a two-tailed test so we'll have an upper and a lower rejection region so we found the, this to be 1.96 and negative 1.96 and so these shaded regions in the tails here and here right we call the rejection region. And so same thing here, rejection region. Okay, the next part of our question, um, part C, asked us to find the test statistic for our sample. And since our standard deviation is known, for us this means we're going to find our Z value and then test it against um, our decision rule here. So once again, the formula we use to find our Z, we take our sample mean, we subtract from that the population mean that we're testing, and then we divide this, we take the standard deviation from our population and we divide that by the square root of our sample size. So plugging in here, we would have Z equals 
Population's mean was 59.5, right on that sample of 48. Tire manufacturer, though, says they should all get 60. And then we divide this by that standard deviation of 5. And our sample size was 48, so we'll take the square root there. So in our numerator here, we'll get negative 500. And then in our denominator, we'll have 5,000 divided by 6.928. So this will just carry over for a second. So now I'm going to divide out this denominator, and we would get 721.71. And so we find a z value of negative 0 0.69. So where would that fall? Does that fall in a rejection region? It does not, because negative 0 0.69 is in between, right, our values here. It would probably be somewhere right about here. And so it is not in the rejection region which gives us then the answer to part D. Part D of the question says, what is your decision regarding the null hypothesis? And so our decision, based on what we've just done, is that we do not reject the null hypothesis that the population mean is going to average out to be 60,000 miles on these tires. Then the last part of the question asks us to find the p-value and then explain what that might mean. So to find our p-value, we're going to go to table B3 in the text that has our z-scores. And we're going to find an area when we have our z of 0 0.69. Remember, our z-table only shows the positive values. And so we find that area to be equal to 0 0.2549, okay? Um, but remember, we're going to subtract that from 0 0.5, which is on one side. So we have 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2549. And so the area on one side would be 0 0.2451, but this is a two-tailed test. So we're going to multiply times 2, and we get a p-value of 0 0.4902. So what is our conclusion? Well, first of all, because our p-value of 0 0.4902 is greater than the significance level for this question, which remember was 0 0.05, then once again, our null hypothesis is not rejected, okay? And furthermore, because it's so large at 0 0.4902, it is, there's very little likelihood that it is false. Um, remember, with our hypothesis testing, not rejecting the null hypothesis is not the same thing as saying the null hypothesis is true. Um, but in this case, because the p-value is so high, um, then their experience is really not that different from what's claimed by the manufacturer. And we can be fairly confident um, that there's very little chance that the null hypothesis is false. And so the mean is probably about 60,000 miles for the population. All right, this concludes this video.